Hi everybody, welcome to Channel Connected. I have uh, Ranoj. Hello. And uh, Tilina Vita. Hi. With me here. Uh, these guys are diehard Tintin collectors. Uh, and uh, they have been uh, nice enough to come to the store for this review of uh, Tintin high end collectible statues. Uh, today, this is the uh, part one of a three part review. Uh, so, you will uh, be able to check out uh, Tintin Homecoming in this review. So, uh, Tintin Homecoming is a, a statue uh, made by Mulinza and uh, that comes in this box. So, let me unbox it. Take the top off. While he is unboxing the statue, uh, this is an iconic figure that was uh, very influential in our childhoods and everyone I'm sure I can attest to that. Um, this particular statue, I myself own one of them and would like to talk to you about uh, the pricing line, the characteristics, the, the significance of this statue. Yeah. And to add a little bit of backstory so that you understand where the statue comes from and why it's uh, actually very important uh, for a Sri Lankan Tintin fan to actually uh, get taller. Uh, just to add a little bit to uh, uh, the whole story, uh, the statue actually is not based on a comic panel to begin with. It's uh, based on a 1935 November uh, uh, Le Petit uh, Wing Tiem uh, cover uh, where the Tintin uh, comic strips first appeared. So uh, this actually depicts uh, Tintin returning from one of his uh, journeys, we uh, uh, presume, to the Far East. And, uh, Actually, delving a little into the past, uh, the first, the first uh, copy, the color copy of uh, 1955 cigars of the Pharaoh, uh, actually features a, 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 a full map of the route that Tintin was supposed to take uh, from uh, port side in Egypt, uh, heading down to uh, Shanghai in China. So Colombo is very clearly marked up as a destination, and in addition to that. Mr. Monsieur Remy goes a whole hop and he actually uh, goes on to tell uh, Snowy about the full route that they're taking and he, in it he clearly mentions uh, Colombo uh, to be one of his stops uh, and he says Colombo the capital city of Ceylon. So that's that's very conclusive evidence that he actually planned to stop by and, he, and that he did. This is the 1955. 1955 first color edition. Yeah. But uh, most of you will notice that the books we have read is a reprint and the text in that changed to Colombo. Uh, I'll show you a reference of that a little later, but right now let's get, get into the statue itself, right? And if you noticed uh, Oshan putting uh, the statue in place, like the base is, uh, he is hooked to the base by one leg, right? And that is the, uh, the front leg. So you can turn him around slowly with the back leg so you can position however you want to uh, uh, position the statue uh, in terms of how you want to display that's one of the key features then the next key feature is of course uh, we will we will get to slowly in a little bit <laughs> uh, the next key feature is of course the uh, the countries that he visited on his uh, on his journeys and his travels. Yeah, the, the stamps of all the ports of call that he's made uh, during his uh, trip to the Far East. So, yeah. the iconic thing about it, which is why I insist that every single diehard uh, Sri Lankan Tintin fan should get their hands on this, is based on the simple fact that Ceylon is marked yeah. out very clearly in this. Yes. So, and uh, my friend here likes to uh, joke about it a little bit that Herge uh, actually had uh, a little bit of insight into Sri Lankan culture because uh, the protocol for Colombo or Ceylon is marked out in the shape of a piece of kiribas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is something that we like to joke about a little bit when, we, when, when it comes to this statue. So, uh, Not only Sri, Sri Lankan, like, if you are looking at it and if you are living in uh, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, uh, India and Spain. I don't know why Spain. Why Spain? Spain, Spain yeah. is the one. <laughs> If you are from uh, Madrid, uh, this will again add some value. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, a 
another cool part about this whole whole statue is that uh, Snowy. Now we're back to you. He can stand on three legs, and that is really cool because you can place him anywhere you want, and he will not fall. So he can be running around this way, this way, this way, and he's he's static. So that's that's a really cool uh, cool factor because you can position him in an angle of movement, which which gives the statue momentum. So that's that's also really cool. I thought it was one of the best highlights. Uh, I mean, I didn't know it at the time when I got it, but after after that, I figured out that that, that was the case. It, it was really fun. Uh, for me, the placement of Snow is actually ideal in the way you yeah. placed it because it's uh, the the body of uh, Snow is actually slightly curved to the left, where it, it actually uh, takes perfect placement. Even though one of his legs sticks out of the sphere, yeah, it actually blends with the statue in a big way because yeah. of the small curvature that's there in the statue. That's one of the coolest features that I've noticed about it as well. Uh, one thing that I'd like to add uh, in terms of the dimensions is that um, uh, it, it might look a little plasticky to uh, begin with, but the statue is actually quite heavy. It's about uh, 1.1 kilos in weight. Uh, just a word of caution in case you plan to uh, buy this, but you also want to make your display cases uh, ahead of time, I suggest you come down to the store and like, you know, um, uh, trouble the guys left, right, and center to get it measured properly, because most of the online uh, dimensions that are given are not very accurate. Uh, right. It's mentioned as about at about 22 uh, centimeters in height, but it differs uh, yeah. slightly. So yeah. if you want to get the cases done, come here ahead of time and uh, maybe uh, trouble the guys to measure it for you. Yeah. yeah. Also, also, if if you're going to do that, then uh, then uh, be aware of all the statues out there. Because some of them are in similar size, so you can actually uh, uh, combine like a display for tinting alone. No, no. So that that might uh, that might help you, uh, you know, display it the way you want. To no, no. Yeah. Also, another thing about tinting collectibles is they have uh, three different types of high-end collectibles. Uh, first one is the limited edition brands. So. Uh, they do uh, limited edition statues uh, and uh, they have numbered edition. Numbered edition is where you have a serial number, this one is a numbered edition. Uh, you have a serial number but there is no edition size, so you, we don't know how many of these will be made. But uh, we know uh, from past experience that uh, it won't be too much. Uh, so for example, the Blue Lotus uh, was was earlier made uh, and it was sold out and people were still looking for it so that means they didn't make enough of it. So this is a numbered edition and uh, when it comes to limited edition uh, there are two types. One is made in China, other one is made in France. Both under license by Moulin's Art. But the ones made in uh, France since of late are selling for like 3,900 euro each. So uh, those are like they make only like 500 of each or less. So, that's a bit of uh, uh, information about the, the types of statues. This uh, this one in particular is number three six six nine. If anyone is lucky enough or has uh, lucky numbers like that, that this this is your calling, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay, so a bit more about the statue itself. Uh, right, let's let's go to the uh, the finish of it. It's definitely matte. Right, uh, the whole finish is matte, uh, and there are a few rough edges that you can note, but that is to be expected with um, resin statues. Resin statues, and uh, there, there is uh, the color scheme is perfect though. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It it does not uh, it does not uh, differ differ vastly from the tintin that we know of or the panels that we used to, the way we used to seeing him, there is no vast difference at all. The only thing of note, if I may, is the fact that if you notice the curvature around the mouth wow. is not as smooth as what we would like it to be. It's slightly jagged because there's a line that runs along the top of the mouth that like sets it off a little awkwardly but it, it doesn't actually take uh, anything away from the whole makeup of the statue basically. So, 
uh, what what you can notice is like from a distance it looks absolutely perfect. Uh, distance means even in close distance. Uh, what what you don't really realize is that uh, the, those uh, smaller details they 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 cannot be uh, taken into consideration given you know the production line and how it how it works because that that's really what it is. Uh, um, but, um... Talking about detail um, in web, I, I, I absolutely love the curvatures on the little bedroll that he's carrying right there, as well as the uh, creases on the uh, long coat that he's wearing. These are like pretty much the exact same as what I remember from the comic panel. So, the, basically, if, if I were to grade this, I'd probably give it about a 9.6 out of 10 or something like that because for me, the this is personification of Tintin. It is, it is, it is a personification, it is also the ultimate finale of his adventures. Like that's what you can expect, right? Like he comes back home after all this, all the travels, all the adventures, and that's what Herd was trying to do. You know, he was he sent this reporter out uh, out on a journey to the world and he went all over the place and he came back. And and that's that's what this signifies. So, I mean, there are a little bit of misses, but overall, it's it's a definite uh, must-have. It's a must-have. It's a must-have because because purely, if not anything else, the fact that uh, it says, uh, I mean, our country is on the map here. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. And, uh, another thing is, it's it's fantastic that we get to do this review at this particular time. Because come January we are heading for the 80th year of Tintin, uh, so uh, might stop the interest of uh, the guys who are already fans and might yeah. get a few new guys on board. It's a it's a it's a fabulous piece to uh, review at this particular time. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that we didn't cover. I think we covered pretty much everything. Uh, in case you didn't get a good look at uh, the trench coat and. The bag at the back, that's that's kind of what it looks like. So, you know, Snowy could be walking backwards as well, you know. So, I mean, that's why I love this uh, person. I mean, this uh, he balances on three legs whichever way and that's perfect. I mean, it, it really adds to the statue that he's also separate as well. So, one so, more final point to add. Sure. Uh, if, you're, if you have a display cabinet and you, you're thinking of displaying this in that, uh, give it uh, a bit of a higher shelf so that uh, the face can be seen uh, properly. But if, if it's at a lower lower uh, level, uh, you might not see the details of yeah, the face because the so, feet tends to cover up and yeah. cast a bit of a shadow on it. So uh, eye animation is always better to well, display it. Yeah. All right. So cool. and uh, 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 you want to tell uh, tell them about uh, the pricing and the scale of this at the moment. Yeah, so scale, uh, in the sense the, the scale as in one to four to Yes. Uh, uh, Tintin collectibles, they actually don't have, they don't specify the scale. Yeah, that's uh, so it, it's more or less like a once, between a one six and a one ten. I don't know. Uh, pricing is, uh, right now this is going for, I think, I can't remember, I think it's about 40,000 rupees. Yeah, 40,000 rupees or 42,000, I can't remember. But but that is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the best price you can find in Colombo. I mean, I can assure you of that because the next best price is if you go to Singapore and talk them down for it. <laughs> so you have to go to Singapore for to know that. Yeah, so that it's anyway a cost, added cost. This is literally a dollar price, so yeah, it doesn't really uh, make much sense to uh, you know get your paws on it from some other place. So. It's, it's, uh, here it is, Tintin Homecoming, and Snow. That's it. Alright, cheers guys. See you with the next one.